Hey, I'm Josh from Tokyo Police Club, and we're here to check out my gear. This is my guitar. This is a 1977 Gibson ES335. Back, I think a few years they put this little switch in. It's a little coil tap switch. Um, I'm not good enough, so I kept hitting it live, so I just had it wired right out of there. So I go halfway through a song and then realize, like, why does it sound so strange now? Take me the rest of the song to figure out that that was the reason. So that's gone. Out of everything else, other than that, it's uh, it's probably 51% sweat at this point. And uh, yeah, but it's uh, beautiful and I love it. Tone pretty much stays full the entire time and pretty much just switching easy back and forth between the neck and the bridge. Do some volume swells, because I never really got the hang of a foot pedal. <laughs> it was just one more thing for me to trip over. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the only use of those those knobs. Strings are the 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 ones, they look like a fancy condom wrapper. It's the NYXLs, uh, the Dario ones. Uh, 10 to 46, we're tuned, we play in E flat, so it's a little bit, little bit loose, but it's kind of nice for bends and stuff like that. It gives you a little bit more to play with. The backup is in same guitar, much better shape. Uh, played only at home, brought on the road. I don't know why, honestly, anymore. I shouldn't be bringing this one out, but uh, nonetheless, it still makes the trips. It's the emotional support animal. So, guitar is coming into this guy, Strymon Deco. Uh, one of the more recent purchases, just love the way it sounds, just like that kind of tape machine saturation, a little bit of compression when it's dialed up a bit. It's a lot of fun. I don't really use the double tracker side of it, but that is a lot of fun in the studio for just, you know, kind of adding some character to like tapey loops and stuff like that. Uh, from there, we go straight into this guy, which is a kind of a recreation of the, I think it's the Maestro M1 phaser, the big like square thing from the 70s with the big knobs. Um, while it isn't that size, it's also kind of nice. Um, so that's just for, you know, a lot of the fun stuff in, in some of the new, new songs. Um, I steered away from phase shifters for a long time because I thought they were lame. And I guess it's just a sign of the, you know, age. That now I'm like, nah, that's the one I want to play. That's the only thing I want. I want it on everything. Um, from there we go into this guy, which is uh, the first pedal I actually own. Not this exact one, but uh, Graham, our uh, other guitarist and keyboardist, had one that he got at some guitar convention. And it was one of the old ones that like plugged in. Uh, it was a casualty of the road, which is terrible because I'm, I'm sure it's like, you know, 600 bucks now for one of those old ones. So we've gone through a few of these over the years, but it's remained a constant since the beginning to now. Uh, beautiful pedal, yeah. Not much more to say about that thing, it's just perfect. Uh, this replaced a fifth generation actual one with the, the foot switch. And again, like the size of this, as soon as this came out, I was kind of tempted to replace it just to free up the real estate. You can see the body imprint of the old one. And now this one's there. It's so much lighter, so you don't get charged the overweight fee and baggage anymore. It's really nice. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Still dialing it in, but it's great. Um, this guy's a lot of fun. From there, we're going here. Just a little bit more drive and gain and stuff. Very cool. Haven't played around with the uh, expression pedal but uh, for live shows, but at home, it's a lot of fun. From there, we go into the most important pedal, the tuner. Um, and that guy's there just because after it comes the delay, so like loops and stuff that get set in this, and then I can tune while the loop is going because you know, a little bit of OCD with the tuning on things like that. So from there we go from here, and here it splits. One signal goes to this guy, which is just a kill switch, and then it goes into the data corrector, which is just a bunch of gnarly noise, uh, very hard to control. And then from there it goes into the tremolo, and that goes to one amp. And then the other signal here goes into... Oh no, I screwed that up. <laughs> Sorry, it goes from here into here, and then from here it splits. So from here, this one goes into the reverb, and that goes to one amp. The other out from this goes into the kill switch, data corruptor, tremolo, into the other amp. It's a whole lot of fun. So this beautiful Guild Thunder bass, um, I got it off my friend. It was his, uh, he was using it as a side table, and it didn't work. Uh, so he gave it to me for a hundred bucks, and he was like, you need to get it fixed, and if you sell it, like, you know, we can split the money or whatever. Um, I got it fixed and then I never sold it. I just held onto it. Uh, so that's my main guy. And then this is a, a cab that I made. If you you know don't look too close, you almost can tell it's you know not homemade. But um, yeah, it's just a 210 cab. Uh, that yeah, it was my first kind of foray into cab building. So you know it gets the job done. The speakers in this one is a beautiful greenback. And the other is a speaker that was in a 1974 Sonax 775G, which was a 410 solid state amp. They were super ugly. Um, but for whatever reason, I loved them. And I had two or three of the 750s, which was a 212. 
and then a 410 and then you know you get to that point where you're like i can't store all these things in my garage anymore so i cut the 410 in half used the uh the wood in one speaker and then put you know the green back in the other side so it's a little bit of a little bit of our roots in that one speaker that nobody ever hears anyway um this guy i'm not gonna lie i bought it mostly because it was purple um, it's a lot of tone. It was this guy, I believe, out of Toronto or maybe Scarborough, just east of Toronto. Um, but it was just at the local uh, store that I used to go to, and I was starting another band with uh, Graham, our keyboardist, and that, that seemed like a good excuse to get another amp, um, and walked in and this purple thing was there. I didn't even play it in the store, I was just, look, let's go, that one, that one's good. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun, and this is the guy that handles the, the data corruptor and the, uh, the tremolo, so it's kind of the effects amp in this setup. They're both, I guess, getting pushed kind of hard. I mean, you kind of see, Donnie keeps yelling at me to turn them down, um, but this one's probably a little bit harder. This one is just, again, when the data corruptor comes in, it's so much louder just to cut through everything. Um, but they're both pretty gritty, and again, the, uh, the deco, the first pedal on the board is doing a lot, of, a lot of the work in trying to get a little bit more saturation and, and dirt on it before it gets to here, before Donnie yells at me to turn it down. Other than that, it's these little, uh, these orange guys, the Tortex 60 millimeter. Um, those have served me well. Playing a lot of the, the kind of, you know, delay tremolo stuff, they start to get eaten up, so I have a few of them that just start to look like, people will ask me if I chew on them. And uh, no, I don't chew on them. Stecky. Um, and then other than that, no, it's wedges. It's not, uh, we tried in-ears a while ago. Uh, our drummer and our singer are both on in-ears and it works a lot for them, but uh, just never really scratch the itch of loud, loud things behind you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here and checking out my gear. Uh, you can check out Tokyo Police Club at tokyopoliceclub.com. We're on all the places you get music. And uh, now the touring's back, we're coming to a place near you soon, hopefully. So check out tokyopoliceclub.com and uh, we'll see you soon.